the year 2050, there will be almost 10 billion people in the world. If we continue at our current rate of growth, we will have more poverty, disease. Welcome to the edge of nowhere, where we delve into the black hole of our reality. Hi, welcome back to another episode of The Edge of Nowhere. Today we're going to be chatting about the long cycles of time and what they may mean for the population on Earth and what does it mean for you today as we think about the future and the number of people on planet Earth or maybe Mars or maybe somewhere else out there. Titan was like most planets. Too many mouths, not enough to go around. And when we faced extinction, I offered a solution. Genocide. In the 2019 Marvel movie Avengers Endgame, we were introduced to the character Thanos. And the question is, is Thanos a good guy or is he a bad guy? Because Thanos is really about saying, well, how do we ensure that Earth survives by eliminating half of the population? Now, while for some of us it may seem as a terrible thing, is it really the case when we consider the amount of resources that we have on Earth and the kind of populations that are going to be coming through in the next 50 and 100 years? According to the United Nations, by 2050 we'll have 9.7 billion people and by 2100 over 11 billion people. How is Earth supposed to sustain those kinds of numbers when we have a finite number of resources? According to scientists, the number of people that the Earth can sustainably hold at today's consumption patterns is 1.9 billion people. That's the same number of people that was on the Earth in 1919. Right now, we have more than four times that number. The Earth is not geared for our consumption habits today. Now, one of those answers may be, how do we change the consumption behavior and consumption patterns? But that's not really a real answer. Because if you are from one of the emerging countries, surely you deserve the right to have a big house and a big car. Well, that's one of the challenges we have right now. So in recent times, China implemented the one-child policy where they were trying to limit the number of children that a family could have. This had unintended consequences such as families killing the second or third child, but it also created all other kinds of crazy things like more men being in China than women because of cultural norms. And it's not just a question of saying, well, population control, because in the more developed countries, we have net negative growth in populations. Whether you think about Australia, or you think about some of the Scandinavian countries, or even just in Europe, the average number of the population is increasing over time. They're getting older and older and older. The net replacement rate is negative, i.e. we don't have enough people being born at a certain time. Most societies are built upon the premise of a triangle, where there's more young people than old people. But in countries like the ones that I just mentioned before, in populations like the ones I just mentioned before, the population numbers are getting smaller and we have a net replacement rate. In certain countries, you're incentivized to have children. In one of the Scandinavian countries, you're actually incentivized to have a child on a certain day. And if you do, you may potentially win a lottery. And so it's all a question around saying, well, how do we ensure that we limit our populations on the one hand, but also how do we ensure that we don't reach an upper or lower limit? And that's one of the questions that Thanos is trying to solve for us. The Gaia Theory which is named after the Greek goddess of Earth. The Gaia Theory proposes that all living organisms interact with surroundings on Earth to create a synergistic and self-regulating system that maintains balance. And one of the other pieces coming out of this is Gaia Theory which comes from the name of a Greek goddess meaning nature. And what she posits is Earth in general is an organism, it's a living, breathing entity and we as human beings are one part of a growing system. And if that is true, then Gaia Theory positions that we as the human beings that have over time have put more animals into extinction than anything else are actually the plague. We're actually the ones that need to be controlled. And if Earth is indeed a living organism, and we've seen this before, whether it's the Aztecs or the Mayans, it has the ability in itself as a growing living organism to get rid of us. It's like if you get sick, if you get the cold or flu, the antibodies try to kill off that disease. And maybe that's us, maybe that's us as the human beings being killed and being destroyed so Earth can carry on living. So maybe Thanos was right. Maybe there are too many people on Earth and maybe we need to come up with a new way of allocating resources, but maybe just us in general, we need to think about how do we live within our means today? Because certainly the world is not able to provide all the resources at our current resource consumption habits. So in today's episode of The Edge of Nowhere, we spoke around the long cycles of time. We spoke around how population numbers are going through the roof and the Earth is not able to provide us with the kind of resources that we need at today's consumption patterns. So join me next time as we journey to the edge of nowhere. Goodbye. I will see you online. Bye. Bye.